Welcome to the Tech Source, guys. Uh, today it's our Bunch of PC 2010 Christmas Edition. This one's very anticipated, so we hope you guys stick around and enjoy it. Uh, we put a lot of thought and effort into this one, so stick around. All right, guys. Um, it's finally arrived, the Christmas budget PC. You know, a lot of you have been bugging us about it, like, guys, when's the video coming up? I want to get the specs. You know, Facebook, we posted, you know, pictures of it, pictures of the PC, and a lot of people have been commenting on how, how nicely the case was and things like that. Well, I'm gonna give you a little background story about the case first. Um, the person I built the PC for, um, they wanted a PC for about under a thousand dollars. They wanted it to be relatively powerful, they can play games like that. They sold their MacBook Pro for it. Um, they sold the MacBook Pro for a pretty decent penny, actually. Um, anyways. So when we first started planning it, we are like, well, let's do an i7 setup. I'm like, I could probably sell you my motherboard, and then I can get a new motherboard, and I'll give you a really good deal. And we were like, okay, we'll try that. And I started figuring it out, and well, then that idea went to the scraps. And we're like, so then we decided to go, you know, maybe 1156, i5, i7, went to scrap as well. Finally ended up with AMD, did an Athlon setup, and we realized we had a little bit more money to play with. So we switched around with the processors, RAM, cases, and things like that. We finally arrived at the initial setup. So, what's the setup? So for CPU, we got an AMD X4 Phenom 955 at 3.2 GHz. Now this is the black edition, so if we did go for a CPU cooler and threw one on there, like um, big Noct 201, like the one we got here, um, we could really overclock the hell out of that and make the computer a lot faster. Now for uh, RAM, we got a uh, 4 GB kit of G-Skill, 6800 DDR3, uh, just 999 timings, no, nothing special, but good RAM, right? Um, hard drive, one terabyte, Western Digital Black, SATA 3, though. Amazing on load times. Pretty cool. 600 watt Corsair CX power supply. Very nice power supply. Sleeve cables. You know, we have an unboxing out, so check that out as well. Um, not modular, wish it was. So, for, we got a Windows operating system, as usual, you know, pretty much any PC besides, well, if you're going to run Linux, but I don't know what games you can play on Linux. We got Windows 7 64 bit home. Not bad. Uh, we also got a DVD drive, of course, you need one of those. Uh, for case, I got a Fractal Design Define R3. Now these cases are pretty cool. They are sound insulated and they're amazingly cheap. Amazingly. And they're only available from one retailer. Probably guess who that retailer is already. <laughs> uh, motherboard, we went with the Gigabyte, off of Dave's suggestion. Now Dave said this Gigabyte motherboard is really good and, uh, well, Dave's been looking into building something similar to what we're doing right now, isn't that right? Yes, it's my secondary landing PC. Yeah, so this Gigabyte motherboard we picked, it's a micro ATX, you know, not the best for future expansion, but it's a Gigabyte 880 GMA uh, UD2H. It's got USB 3, SATA 6, and it's got crossbar support and built in video and all that, the bells and whistles, right, for a micro ATX board. And it's like really cheap, too. It's like everything we turned out with was like, wow, we have a lot of good parts and a lot of good things. And it was just like, this is working out really good. Um, well, lastly, we got a video card. So, Instead of getting the uh, 6870, which I was like, yo, let's get a 6870 because they're only like 250 bucks, but couldn't fit it in the budget because you got the bit faster processor and things like that. So we went the 6850, still plenty fast. Um, and it's, it's a great system. It went together pretty good. And as you can see the pictures, you know, it looks great and got more detailed pictures if you go on our Facebook. So that's pretty cool. Hey, Danny. Hey. So the parts list is good. Mm -hmm. But I think it's time for some benchmarks. So some real world performance. Yes. So why don't you tell me how it did in 3D Mark VI? Well, 3D Mark VI is a great benchmark, and a lot of you are going to be saying, why don't you use Vantage? I don't own a copy of Vantage, and I don't feel like forking up the money. But 3D Mark VI is a 3D DirectX 9 benchmark, and it's good for DirectX 9 performance. So it scored 17,186 points. A really respectable score for something that is under $1,000 Canadian. And that's taxes in. Ontario sales tax, where we live, is 13% of whatever your initial price is. That's not bad. Um, so the SM2 score was 6,757. The HDR score is uh, 8,422. And the CPU score is 4,481. Now we can make these numbers go up quite a bit higher because you probably overclocked that video quite a, quite a bit. And the processor, well, since it's a black, you can overclock the piss out of it, as long as you've got a good cooler for it, which we didn't buy one yet. Hmm. That's pretty interesting, but let's get a little more realistic up in this. Okay. Uh, what did it do with Soccer Clear Sky? Okay, well, Soccer Clear Sky is a DirectX 10.1 game. 
Now, um, we have the resolution on every game, and every game is patched to the latest version, and all the resolutions are running on it. I'm, I was guessing, you know, most people that are building a budget PC would be running around this resolution. A 22-inch monitor, now 1680 by 1050. It's a respectable resolution, I think. Not full 1080p, but it's still there. So, full Ultra, full DirectX 10.1 support. We're running the day benchmark at 49.9 frames a second. Minimum, 26 frames a second. So that's completely playable, acceptable. Um, night, 60 frames a second, 30 frames a second minimum, and the average was uh, 60. Rain benchmark, an average of 67, and minimum of 33. Totally acceptable again. Uh, the sun shafts. Now, this benchmark in both Pure Sky and Call of Pripyat kicks the crap out of any video card. Uh, a minimum of 21 and an average of 30. So, when you do get into certain sections with the really high shaders and, and sun glares really going on, it's going to hinder the performance a bit, but it's still acceptable at some points. So, Let's ask the ultimate question of this PC, Danny. Yep. Can it run Crisis? Oh, it can. Well, we got a minimum frame rate of 23.3 frames a second. 23 frames, a lot of people might be thinking, that's not really that playable. Well, think about this. TV is only 24 frames a second, so it is playable. Um, an average of 32, so it's playable at max settings. You can probably bring it down a bit. You don't need it completely cranked. It still looks good on high. Um, and it's playable. So that's pretty good, and considering this is a budget system, it's not super high end, it doesn't have dual video cards, so that's pretty good. Now that's on Crisis Warhead. So what about Original Crisis? So the Original Crisis, we're looking at an average frame rate of 33 frames a second. So we're looking around the same performance again after all the patches. You know, when Crisis wasn't patched, it was a real hog and nothing really worked. But with the patches, it's about the same as Crisis Warhead. Fair enough. So, what if I want to hop in a Subaru Impreza and go take a spin around a dirt track? Let's play some dirt too? Yes. Well, if you want to be like Ken Block and rally around, um, you're looking at amazing frame rates in full DirectX 11, you know, cranked out, completely ultra settings. We're looking at an average frame rate of 61 frames a second. Now that's really nice. You know, playing at 60 frames a second is a way smoother than 30. Once you get used to 60, it's like you can never go back. <laughs> it's nice, and we saw a minimum of 55, so it was perfect. And that game has tons of damage, all the water effects and all that. It's a really heavy game, but it's really well optimized. Alright, but I think it's time we get back to the basics, Danny. Yep. How did it do in the Windows Experience Index rating? Well, the ex Windows Experience Index rating, it rated a 5.9. That's because of the hard drive performance. If we saw like a SSD or a rate zero configuration, the number would be higher. The hard drive was the slowest thing on the computer, apparently. Now, for the processor, rated 7.3 out of 7.9. That's a pretty good score for processor. I think my i7 gets around that. Yeah, I think it's a little bit higher than that. Well, the RAM got 7.5. That's really good, too. And for graphics, 7.7 .7 for graphics and 7.7 .7 for gaming graphics. Really good, too. So, an overall good benchmark. You know, if you guys really want to go by these scores, I don't see they're the most accurate, but they're pretty good to go by. But, overall, really respectable scores for something at its price range. Alright guys, so in conclusion, as you can see this computer is a really good PC for the money as the parts, you know, they're really good parts and uh, you know, any of you guys can pick up all these parts and build a computer yourself. Um, well, I'm just going to go over a quick little thing. This PC, if you guys may be wondering, it's a really silent one because the fractal design to find R3 uses sound insulation everywhere. Um, the case has like these holes where you can take the fan holes, take these covers out and then you can have put fans there or put them in and it makes it appear dead silent. And we put uh, two Yatemoon fans in there and Yatemoon fans, the, uh, I think they're the 13 or the 1800 RPM ones we used, are dead silent, push a good amount of air, good alternative to knock to us, and they're only like five bucks, they're really cheap. And, then, and they have a cool color scheme because they're black and red. Cool. They look cool, they look cool right? So, um, I like them. We put one on the side, we put one on the top, so now we have on the case, you can see the picture, we have a rear fan and a top fan exhausting air. We have one intake fan blowing air across the hard drive and a side fan blowing cool air across the video card and the chipset. So that's always good, right? Good airflow. Always need good airflow on a PC, so make sure you always do good wiring. But, um, as you can see, it's a really nice PC in the pictures we have here, and in conclusion, it's a really good PC for under $1,000. If you guys are thinking about picking up a Christmas budget PC or want your parents to uh, buy you all the parts and then you put it together, give you the money, and you put it together yourself, 
Hint, hint. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Tell your parents to buy one before Christmas comes around. It's a really good PC, guys, and then you can maybe game with, game with us on Steam. Go play some TF2, you know, Call of Duty, things like that. It'd be pretty cool. Battlefield Bad Company 2. Yeah. It's Dave's, fa Dave, Dave's favorite game. Yeah. Dave plays that a lot. And it's a really good PC. The guy I built it for loves it. He's really happy. He loves it over his Mac. He got rid of his Mac for a PC. I just gave me a huge high five for that. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. All right, guys. So, as always, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching our budget PC Christmas Edition 2010. Yeah. As always, remember to rate thumbs up, that one right there, just so you don't get confused, and subscribe. Yeah. And we will see you guys on Steam. Join our Steam group. It's just in the description below. You can just click it. Join it on Steam. It's really cool. You can game, come game with us. And also like us on Facebook, because all the specs and everything about this PC was actually released first on Steam. The pictures released first on Steam, and that's where a lot of the anticipation for this built up. So. And by Steam, Danny means Facebook. Facebook, yeah. Anyways, Facebook, like it. It's worth it, guys. Stick around, guys. See ya.